underway. The Bruins starting off behind Riley Furch, their talented number 10. It's a team that likes to chop and change almost a rotational policy through midfield for you soccer aficionados, almost total football. Let's check on the first 11s and really kind of business as usual with Crockford in goal. Silva at left back, Grassi coming in at center back. One of the Mac Herman watch listers and of course Jose Conte, Kevin Diaz up top spearheading the charge with Konstantinos Michalides, who's somewhat of a beaver killer guy who scored three times in his career against this Oregon State team. Well, and he's a player that UCLA will definitely look to go to and try to spring forward. So again, it's going to be interesting between TM and Konstantino, uh, Konstantinos Michalides to see who has the ability to pull forward, push forward, and who's making the other, the opposition, come back and defend. And a three-back system tonight for Terry Boss with Gilbert Armas and Lund back there. Kind of a box in midfield with three in the attack. Tiam, Spikner, and Awador. The near side now, Silva locates Michalides, the Cypriot, Furch dropping in. He likes to pull those creative strings in a deep line and a more advanced role. Lovely ball played for Diaz, and right back at it on the one-two, and really well read back there from the Oregon State defender, Gael Gibert. Pac-12 second team last year. Just nice ball played in there, but really nothing, no space in front of Furch as it's closed down pretty quickly by Jaber. There will be space, one thinks, in wide areas with that three-back setup. You see, they trying to attack it tonight. Easier said than done. A throw in now to the Beavers, who come in with a very respectable record of three and two. Started with a couple of games unbeaten. Two consecutive defeats to Seton Hall and UCSB, but back-to-back -back wins away to Seattle and away to Denver has lifted their spirits. Here is Gilbert now linking up with Davi Perez, one of eight Spaniards in this cosmopolitan setup via Corvallis, Oregon. And it comes out as Silva here at an Oregon State throw. And I think for the Beavers, obviously starting the season ranked so high, coming in at fifth ranked in the nation and having some struggles early, I think for them. And when we talked to Coach Terry Boss, it really has been about those units, those huge, massive units, that influx of new players to really mesh with the old players. And it takes time. That, that camaraderie, that chemistry takes time on the field, off the field. So that's something that Coach Boss has been pleased with in terms of the progression and likes where they are at today. Day. And it comes out of play. It's a team that only has five upperclassmen kind of mixing the two groups. A lot of youngsters out there, 24 underclassmen technically on the roster this year. And also you throw in a lot of international students coming in. I believe they represent 10 different countries uh, coming in there. You see last season they had that 14-2 and 4 record, number one overall seed into the tournament. Number two team was Washington, so Pac-12 represented well. And in best, the ever, best ever season in school history. I mean, first outright Pac-12 conference championship, and Terry Boss has really turned this team into an emerging power, not just out here on the West Coast, but nationally, as you were alluding to. And I think that's what happens when you have such high expectations to coming into a season and you don't perform right away. I think the heads start to drop. You start to question whether or not you have the ability. But that's, again, one thing that Coach Terry Boss said. He knows his team can do it. He believes in his team. And now they're starting to get that belief back after that chemistry has come. It's bungled into there by Andrea Captevilla. There's Diaz playing it into the path of Michalides. Flag will stay down, trying to square it across. And easy down there for Luis Castillo, another one of those Spaniards, the freshman. 13 freshmen on this Oregon State team this year. And one of three in the first 11 tonight for the Beavers. UCLA able to win it back now. Near sign for Kevin Diaz, who's made a habit of scoring goals against Oregon State as well. Three in his career. Had that winner last year here in Los Angeles. Late on in the 83rd minute, a 3-2 triumph for UCLA. And that coming after a September defeat for UCLA in Corvallis in a seven-goal shootout with Oregon State just edging it. Near side now for Gibert. 
Trying to link up with Mo Tiam, the Senegalese, who drops into his central midfield role. It's almost a box in midfield here, yeah, Tracy. And it's so interesting to watch their movement. Really hard in terms of scouting out the opponent, trying to figure out where these players like to run, the spaces that they like to occupy, where exactly they want to force you. Really, both teams, tough to figure out. Here's Aaron Edwards, who's a handyman, almost a Swiss Army knife back there, playing it right back earlier this season and slotting into a familiar center back role. And two rough and tumble for Tiam, who brings down Tommy Silva, so a free kick for the UCLA Bruins. And Tommy Silva's been flat out fantastic this season. He has a nice first touch there as he eventually gets brought down by Tiam. But one thing is evident and is obvious, both teams will like to possess and want the ball. Here's Ochoa with a good-looking cross, direct style here from the Bruins, bypassing the midfield. Mikhail Lidi squaring it in, and Furch has his run impeded. Time by Cap de Vila. Times away now from Armas, the reigning Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week with that brace he scored the last time out nine days ago. So the Beavers pretty well rested after that win over then number 11 Denver 2-1. It's just their seventh game. There's the ninth game of the season for UCLA. Bruins dropping back behind Armas. He's kind of at the center of that three-back system, along with Gibert and Nicholas Lund. Up the front now for Cap de Vila, trying to knit the lines together. Lovely touch from Dante Williams. One of the rare sightings of an American in the first 11, the kid from Monterey, California. Gibert. Peeling around is Perez, who just loses it, shows too much of it to the Italian center half. Pietro Grassi, former AC Milan youth product. Michael Lidis slowed down. It's a little bit of a high pressure system here from Oregon State. And Terry Boss telling us, hey, we want to possess, we want to be on the ball, but when we do lose it, we want to win it back quickly and higher up the pitch. That was evident, especially in that last turnover for the Bruins to the Bruins. It was immediately high pressured from Oregon State trying to win it back. Here's Andrea Choa for UCLA, the junior from Anaheim. Our side for grace and duty, supported well by Aaron Edwards, the sophomore from San Jose. Converted from an attacker, and he loses it, showing too much of it now. And here comes Dante Williams, linking up nicely. Perez fires, takes a deflection. Good block in from Pietro Grassi, who had a good read on it. That's a tough challenge there, but on this last one, good look for Oregon State. A little touch, a little bit behind, had to get his balance and ripped one, but a great slide over defensively for UCLA coming up at the block. It is, of course, scoring in that 3-1 defeat away to UCSB earlier this month. One of two defeats for Oregon State. And coming just one week after that tough home loss that saw them upset by Seton Hall in Corvallis by a goal to nil. OSU was ranked as high as number five to start the season. Went down to number two and have dropped out of the top 25 for the USC coaches poll. USC poll. poll. Here's Gibert. Cap de Villa. And the German, Lund, the sophomore from Hamburg, Germany. Pele is trying to wheel around and stepping in was Silva. This is Achoa. They've broken the lines here. And Furch, what a good read that was from Mo Tiam. He's getting the inside channel and releases it now for Dante Williams. Right now there's just so much space in the midfield, so if Oregon State can find a way to break that first line of pressure by that run that was made in by David Perez, just wasn't able to connect on it. But that space is where it's at right now for Oregon State, right in the middle. Here is Joubert. Thiers, France. Very calm. This is an Oregon State team. If you let them, they can pass you off the park. Here's Adrian Capdevila. 
of that plug-and-play system as we've seen Kyle Davila cover a lot of ground. The referee will call this one back as he was slowed by Furch. Ali Furch, such a big part of the setup, senior in Florida. Ten minutes gone and no goals between these two. Not a lot of clear-cut opportunities either. Cap de Vila, a little bit of a mistake here. Ochoa plays it in. This is Diaz. First touch in. Just gets his lines crossed with Riley Furch. And Riley Furch hesitated there. He wanted to make a fake like he was going to make that run that Diaz thought he was going to make and then was trying to cut back to the middle. Just not on the same page was Diaz and Furch. But you can see what UCLA is trying to do. They're trying to bait Oregon State into going right in the middle of the park, force a turnover, and then counter quickly. Had a little bit of joy down this left-hand side as well and some combination play, but just trying to knit it together. It's always that final piece of the jigsaw, as they say, that trying to get that final ball in, an extra bit of polish in front of the goal. We can see the team that's really not banging in the goals this year, just six in their first six games. It's the fewest in conference, but bear in mind they've played fewer games than any other team of the six in Pac-12 men's soccer so far here in 2022. It's again Furch, who's been brought to the floor more times than not early on. Yeah, it was Dante. Oh, no, actually it was Captavia for the Beavers. A little clip there. It's close to Michalidis, good first touch there from Diaz to set himself up, but possession all too short-lived, and the Beavers reclaim. Lovely back heel that time from Armas. Playing it for Joran Gibet, a sophomore from France. He told you it was cosmopolitan. You get eight Spaniards, four Frenchmen, an Italian, of course, a German, a couple of Argentinians throwing a Chilean and an Ethiopian, and it's the United Nations of soccer. <laughs> and for me, I'm just thinking of the task that Coach Terry Boss has to, to work with, right? You talk about these freshmen coming in, you talk about newcomers, but then you have the international element on it as well. So Perez is getting a warning here. This will, the next one is a warning here. It's shoulder to shoulder, just to trip in. And it's not the first time we've seen that tonight. Yeah. Spaniard. Referee tonight, Eunice Marakai. Giving a warning for Oregon State's number 12. And next one, no doubt, on him. We'll probably see some cards. Goes all the way back to Luis Castillo. Talk about big shoes to fill. Andre Fernandez moving on after a great season last year for Oregon State. Team that amassed 10 shutouts. Second best in conference. It's turned over now. And here comes Gerbet. Reigning Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, Dante Williams, dropping in to show a little deeper now. Motiam in support. Nice combination play on the one-two. Senegalese pumps in a good strike, and it's a good goal. And it's bubbled in by Ellis Spikner with a superb run. He held his concentration, and Oregon State have drawn first blood here in Los Angeles. It's the Beavers one. UCLA now. What? A beautiful buildup was Oregon State. It was Mo Tiam with the one-two from Williams. Tiam picks his head up, sees the runner in the box, and Spikner just does what he can to get his body in front of the defender, get a touch on it, and redirect that one into the back of the net, beating Nate Crawford. You can see they're off the bounce. The half volley just redirects it. No power needed on that one. Spike Drew with his second of the season from Benton Harbor, Michigan. Of course, had the goal of the second half winner for the Beavers back in August against UC Davis, and he's come up trumps once again. How about the perfect pass played in from Monty Young with his third helper of 2022, and it's a dream start here for UCLA. Score with their first shot on target. Now, what kind of character will we see from the UCLA Bruins who are unaccustomed to being in this situation, especially here on home soil. 
and after the warning, this time it's going to go against Oregon State. This time the beating on the case. We talked about resistant infringement. And this time it's going to go against the Beavers in Clarence Amador. And Amador not happy. But UCLA definitely started off on the front foot. I thought getting some space out here on this near area, the channel and the wide area, with some crosses in, nobody getting on the end of it. And then it's Oregon State who had the most of the possession, was keeping the ball, had a little bit of trouble playing out of the back, eventually breaks through. And just a beautiful combination, which finds the back of the net in the end. So go on the 14th. And Wow, it's wonderful progressive football. Be able to stretch the midfield, get it wide, knock it back in, and get the best of defending. And here come UCLA looking for the response. Flag will stay down for Diaz, who shows too much of it. So Mo Tiam, originally from Dakar, Senegal. Here's Grassi with a rare errant touch now, presenting it for Perez. Here's the goal scorer, Ellis Spikner. Wheeling around is the sophomore. Playing at the center, that three-pronged attack. Williams dropping deeper as well. She bear now for Tiam. Sledding here for UCLA, getting a little bit of a taste of their own medicine, so to speak. <laughs> and you can tell they, they do want that ball back. They're working hard to try to force the Beavers into an area of the field where they want them to go so they can then close down the space and close in and force up a turnover. But Oregon State doing great dealing with the pressure. Somewhat tepid start, but in the opening salvo, think about taking your chances. It's something Terry Boston, you know, we want a little bit more in the final third. It's always some, the last Ready thing that comes together in a season. He's got to be happy with that. Oh, absolutely happy with that start. And it's interesting, both coaches really talking about that finishing in the final third. It seems like a lot of talk from coaches, especially in the first half of the season, hoping that their team finds their way with that rhythm, that finishing rhythm. Something tells me you haven't seen the end of the goals this evening, that's for sure. Here's Grace and Duty operating at right fullback tonight for the UCLA Bruins. You can technically categorize it as a 4-3-3, but it's a total football approach. As Edwards is brought to the floor, you see Diaz, that center forward role with Michalides wide on the left, and the Spaniard Conte on the right with Furch underneath, but it's a rotational policy, real interesting approach. Armas. Giber. Here's Perez. Tiam closed down by Michaelidis. A lot of space to operate here for the Senegalese. Such a calmness, such a composure on the ball for this international setup from Corvallis. Gerard Joubet now back to Armas. Here's Nicolas Lund. Why did this left-hand side? We haven't seen too much out of that. This is Clarence Amador, who's just booked and really shows it and shows his heels now to Grace and Duty. Good burst of pace. Amador on the approach, leaves it. Tiam couldn't set himself on that first touch, but gets another chance at it, sets it up. And that one beautifully set up, but not well taken by Gerard Gerbet. <laughs> not a bad crowd on your alma mater. Driving through the campus, some more students starting to trickle in as classes are starting to, getting ready to start. Well, you were, the pressing, the, you were pressing the flush, and I saw you, you know, making nice with a lot of the stewards <laughs> around here. The Got mayor some of old, old Sandberg friends, Stadium. yes. Uh -huh. old, old friends from back in the day. Have to say hello. <laughs> Here's duty. Content. He was trying to find this game, and a little dip in his shoulder. Clever stuff from the Spanish winger. And he's checked to the floor. This will probably be a booking. Strong fortified challenge from Armas. Who brings down Jose Conte. <laughs> Conte right now pleading with the referee, wondering why that was not a card. And the referee says, hey, look, you got the foul. I've seen him give him for less, that's for sure. So Conte locking horns with his countrymen. 
Jose Conte. Well, he's been in and out of the lineup. Provides the width, a couple of goals so far. Free kick now for the Bruins. So let's see if they draw up here. Brought Edwards forward along with Grassi. Calis amongst those targets. It's not only their bread and butter. Looking for the better angle with Furch. Lost it into the area. Michalides couldn't wrap his foot over it and sends it all the way out on Charles E. Young like Drive. <laughs> all the way out there. But that was a great idea and thought from the Bruins, trying to force the defense to shift a little bit and be a little bit more unpredictable as Furge tries to find Michalides in behind the defense, but Michalides just unable to get on top of that one. Shooting clay pigeons is the Cypriot, but he's been sensational this year, Michalides. Already the trifecta of goals, as I mentioned, he's made a habit of scoring against this team, Michalides. A couple last November in that win. Scored a couple of years ago in that odd spring season. In a 4-3 victory over Oregon State. It's the 50th meet meeting between these two. Oregon State back in possession behind Javier Armas, the defender who's the offensive mini player of the week. Don't see that every day. And here's <laughs> Gilbert, the senior. Powering through the challenge from Furch. Gerbet operating that central role. Just in front of that back three, providing a little steal and some nice distribution as well. And persistent infringement there. A little too handsy from Andrea Choa. And a real good job there by Gerbet. Number eight for the Beavers. And between Gerbet and Captavia, they've been doing a pretty good job holding down the defensive center mid role for the Beavers, keeping possession. And the Bruins aren't pressing too high. They're allowing the Beavers to play back there, but overall, the Beavers doing a great job in possession. And was a 3-4-3 with a box in midfield. Tian busting out wide here. He's had a lot of joy. Here's Perez. Nice one-two game. Those two with a telepathic understanding between each other. And Tian looking for the cross. Good block in with the Beavers. They get their second corner of the evening. Tian, the transfer from Radford, down his third season with Oregon State, and he's really proved to be a thorn in UCLA's side. He is. He's getting it down those wide areas right now, getting some crosses in. Forcing on that last one, UCLA to have to send this one over the inline. And this is a good opportunity for Oregon State on a set piece. So standing over it will be Armas. UCLA going with a mix of zonal and man marking. Beavers bringing up the tall timber. Nice delivery. Dante Williams set himself, but couldn't really hit it with any power. Wide to the left-hand side for David Perez, the freshman from Spain. Links up with Awador. Supported well by Armas, who's come forward from his central defensive position. It's a really progressive, modern approach from Oregon State. With this approach, you really do have to be disciplined as a player. You have to understand where the, the voids are when a player moves out of position and where to fill in. They want to find their space and finish, and they're doing a good job of that early on. Here is Gerbe, the sophomore. Angles one out wide. It's claimed by Awador. And the Frenchman sizing up duty. Good overlap from Lund. This is Dante Williams who fires in the cross. The header from Perez. And didn't Crockford get down well to save for UCLA? <laughs> Porous marking. The UCLA's talented goalkeeper bailing them out. Crawford. Crockford coming up huge that time on a little deflection from Perez, got in behind the back line, just tried to flick it on, and Crockford reacted to that one. Big six foot four sophomore, got down really quickly. Difficult for a big keeper like him, and four big saves in that clean sheet victory over Cal State Fullerton over the weekend. All the way back to Gerbet. Gerbet. Armas for Nicholas Lund. 
came through the Hamburg youth system up there in northern Germany. Perez. Trying to pick his space. There's an air of composure. You don't need a lot of space to operate Oregon State. Armas. Al Gibert. An errant touchdown recovered nicely by Spikner and is brought down. Referee waves it on. Finds its way out to the German. Lund, Williams with a lovely first touch here, and Dante Williams has been impressive, dropping into that deep roll. Tiam, who's been electric, now enters the penalty area, closed down by Mikhail Lidis. He's full of tricks, tries to square it, takes a deflection off of Edwards and safely into the gloves of Nate Crockford. Nice, Mo Tiam takes his trot back. We look at that previous huge save from Nate Crockford, just able to get down in time go to ground to save that one. Crockford came in in the last four games last year with the injury to Justin Garces. A couple big saves in that big victory for UCLA last November against this Oregon State team, and that was his NCAA debut. How about that? Talk about a baptism of fire. <laughs> Here's Davi Perez for the Oregon State Beavers now. Looking very comfortable in the driver's seat. Midway through the first half. Great to have you along. This is Pac-12 men's soccer. Side UCLA alumnus Tracy Bailey, Christian Miles. And it's Perez who's brought to the floor. And referee Yunus Marakai is trying to keep a lid on this one. It's had a certain degree of physicality. It has already uh, early on. You can tell that the intensity is up. This is Pac-12 game, so both teams know the importance of getting some points here. And you see the last play with the collision as David Perez went down for the Beavers. Looks to be okay, though. Back up. That's about the third or fourth coming together between Perez and Tommy <laughs> Silva. This time it's Perez who takes the brunt of that coming together. But Perez, who was warned by referee Yunus Marakai, pulling both players together and saying, enough, boys, let's get on, let's play. Oregon State, no doubt, up for this with that extra bit of rest. First taste of conference play this season. A great run last year, only one defeat in conference, but that loss did come here, as I mentioned, in November of 2021 in that 3-2 defeat. And play it sportingly back, Grassi. It'll come all the way to Javier Ramos, where Oregon State will take over possession once again, looking for their third consecutive win. After a couple of defeats. Here's Spikner, the goal scorer, nicely read, and just sneaking in from behind is Edwards, who's brought to the floor, and he's won a free kick and is appealing for the yellow card. Edwards not happy, but beautiful anticipation to cut through and break up the pass and intercept it there. And you can see three white jerseys surround Edwards immediately. Still no bookings for Oregon State. So the free kick now to be Tommy Silva with that sweet left foot. Already with four assists this season, already third best in Pac-12 so far. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. UCLA have been pretty good at dead balls. In fact, their last three goals Coming for free kicks and corner kicks. Here's Riley Furch now for the Bruins, trying to orchestrate something positive. A little dipsy do, but not fully. Motiyam, who continues to impress on this right hand side. Right, he's doing things offensively and that time defensively. As Furch tried to get past him and sneak by. There's a higher press from UCLA, trying to make it uncomfortable out of the back. I say perhaps trying to pick up the intensity a little bit. Yeah, and I, I think they can use a little bit a little bit of a spark right now for the Bruins. Uh, it's clear to me that they want to keep Oregon State in front of them. They're content with they have the ball uh, and, and to let them play. And as long as they're staying in front of them, we haven't seen a lot too far or too many times in behind in terms of a long ball situation. And Virch can't control once again. Tiam and he's slowed. Ochoa is going to be booked for this. Just a tug at the top. Used to call it the old professional foul, but these days it's known as the tactical foul. 
Whatever the case, yellow card is a yellow card against Andre Ochoa, who picks up his third booking of 2022. Well, and Ochoa arguing there, that was my first time, but maybe if it was the first time, the first couple of fouls of the game, but the referee really trying to get a handle on this one. Captavila away at a nice burst through midfield. Keeper came for it, but Edwards takes matters into his own hands and clears, but only as far as Adrian Captavila. Pulling the strings in central midfield. It's come out wide to this left-hand side for a Clarence Amador. Here's Williams. Lovely touch from Perez, trying to sneak it through for Williams. Nicely read once again from Aaron Edwards. He's a converted defender, but he has a natural aptitude for the position. He certainly does. He reads the, the space where the opposition wants to go really well and then just jumps in and intercepts. There is Javier Amas, a junior from La Coruña, up there in Galicia, Spain. Came through the famous Depor youth system. Spikner, the goal scorer. Closed down, but it'll be a Bieber throw in. Tian, supported well here by Al Jiber. This is Armas going with a direct route. It's food and drink there for Edwards. It's dropped out now. Wide for Alador. 1v1 drops the shoulder to the byline. And he's been a handful. Is that initial burst of pace that unhinges defenders. And we haven't seen the ball in behind to, to allow him to spring into that space, but he certainly has been doing it on the ball. Those 1v1 situations, he's taking his player on, and you can see here just some beautiful touches, crosses it over to his left, trying to get a foot on it to get across, and it, in the end, it's deflected, giving Oregon State another corner kick here, their second of the match. So to the far side, standing over it, will be Armas. Packing the box, they whip it in, and repelled well by UCLA's grace and duty. He'll pump another one in, and there is Crockford, who just got a hand to it. The referee spotting perhaps the infringement. That's what UCLA is claiming, but once again, Crockford really coming into his own. He's the number one goalkeeper, looking more assured at a better command of the penalty area. And always those second time balls in, the second balls, the recycled runs, and you do, do see Lund there, number 22 in the white jersey, come in and land right in the space of a UCLA Bruin defender. No call on the play. It's a near side, and it will be Armas once again on the third corner for the visitors. This time the punch from Crockford. Good clear at set time. Once again, it's Amador who gets a hold of it. UCLA trying to do just that. They haven't really been able to get a hold of possession and play their game. There's Adrian Captavila now for Gael Gibert. Tian. So having to play without their instrumental freshman. Tyron Kawamachi, who really impressed in the first six games, but misses out once again, and he is such an integral part playing that number six role in front of the back four. A great stabilizer is what I like to call him. The freshman missing out once again. It's a big miss for UCLA, and they've kind of had to use players that in a defensive midfield role where it's not the natural fit. That's right, Sosa really rotating into that spot. And, and his best spot on the field for him is really more of an attacking center mid role, that number 10 role. And the coach is just really proud of the way that he has stepped up. And he's a senior. He said he knows, you know, what this team wants to be, where they want to go. And that's the role that has to be filled. And so he's willing to step up and, and take it and, and be a, a stalwart back there for UCLA. Nice interception down that right hand side where Mikhail Lidis has floated over. And here comes the Cypriot and slowed well. Andre and Cap de Vila getting stuck in and winning it back. And a chance now for the Beavers to counterattack. How about that around the world? And Adrian Cap de Vila, he's feeling it. <laughs> Sends it well high. The uh, polish on the finish wasn't there, but it certainly shined through midfield. It sure did. A beautiful setup and really nice piece of individual play, individual effort by Cap de Vila. You can see there, he really gets the ball right near the midfield. 
A nice little dance on it around the world. Gets his head up, has plenty of space in front of him and just gets far, too far under it on that one. Channeling his inner Zizou, Zidane Zidane. Substitution, Thomas Rimbaud coming in for Riley Furch to change an attack. He'll play in that center forward spot. And you'll see Diaz drop into a deeper role. An attack and another change once again. Back-to-back -back substitution here. We'll see JC Cortez, a little used defender, the Freshman from Ridgewood, New Jersey coming in and off goes Mikhail Lidis. This is an interesting move here for Brian Jordan. See what he has up his sleeve. Mikhail Lidis is playing wide on that left-hand side. You see Cortez, as I mentioned, a defender by trade, but a chance perhaps to play a little more advanced. Here's Tommy Silva now. The Bruins in the rare piece of possession. Diaz in that deeper role. Slips in, breaks those lines. Here's Rainbow, the New Zealander, who gets his first touch. Sosa now. This is better now. UCLA picking up the pace, wide for Conte. That one squared in, and Oregon State unflappable at the back and have won the free kick. Down goes Armas in the challenge. I think Coach Ryan Jordan for the Bruins, with the substitutes being inserted, maybe see something there for the Bruins trying to switch it up, trying to see a spark. And I thought that Mihalidis started off the game well with some touches outside, getting in the width, trying to get some crosses in. And then the Beavers have done well to really stall him out and keep him quiet. And UCLA forging away behind Jose Conte, their own Spaniard. Only one on the team. And Able to keep possession here, hard charging. Tommy Silva wide, this is Cortez, the substitute. Just plays it off of Tiam and out. It will be a Bruin throw. So you see like shaking things up a bit. Oregon State getting set to make theirs first change. Let's take a look back and it was a lovely buildup. Finished off expertly by Ellis Spikner on the 14th minute. It was a nice little one too and it's Mo Tiam who has the time and space to get his head up. See Spikner making that near post run. Spikner just redirects it into the back of the net. Well taken, Spikner with his second goal of 2022. Substitution, Arnau Farnos, the freshman, come into midfield. And we'll see Perez take a seat on the bench. And one substitute for Terry Boss in Oregon State. And look the part. Looking a lot like that 2021 Oregon State team that was so very impressive which won seven of their 10 games in conference last term on their way to their first Pac-12 title outright. Talking about an emerging power. NCAA tournament, three of the last four years, all under Terry Boss, a school that's only been to the tournament on six occasions in school history. They've kind of risen from the depths. Here's Pietro Grassi now for the UCLA Bruins. This is Tommy Silva. A little more central. Duty. You see, they're just trying to pick up the tempo and quicken the pace of this game. They've been careless in possession. And Spike near the goal scorer trying to play it on that inside channel, but it's nicely read by Grayson Duty to get it back for UCLA. Cortez. Too many opponents come into UCLA's pitch in box possession, but that's what we see from Oregon State. They'll go direct this time. And too strong for Andrea Choa down that right-hand channel. I'd like to see UCLA be a bit more patient. They, they finally had a nice spell of possession and then elected to go long and really not anywhere near con connecting on that long ball. So keep possession, make Oregon State chase a bit. You've been chasing all game if you're UCLA, so now it's your turn to try to make Oregon State work to get the ball back. Here's Edwards. Once again, right on track now. And Farnos has just come into the game, can't quite dig it out. And UCLA get it back. This is better. Trying to set up camp inside the Oregon State half. Wide to the right hand side now, and Conte did drift over the touch line. I'm gonna 
So throw it now for Oregon State. Hasn't exactly been pulsating end-to-end -end stuff, but it's been open. It has you, been. You think of chess matches, and this really <laughs> fits the bill, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. And it almost seems like Oregon State, uh, obviously, they're happy because they've had most of the possession of this game, but they're almost possessing in a way that's lulling UCLA to sleep a little bit. Uh, UCLA has to pick up some intensity and urgency. Silva loses out. Williams chases it down, and it'll be an Oregon State throw in. And I tell you what, it, it is no fun to just have to chase a lot and try to win the ball back from the opposition. We're doing a lot of running, a lot of work defensively. Silva loses it. Williams claims spiked it now for the Oregon State Beavers. See another substitution now. And Ryan Jordan going to the bench and bringing on the grad student, Nicholas Blasu his first season after moving over from American in Washington, D.C. This is actually his third school he's played for. Freshman and sophomore season at Kentucky, last two years at American, and now moving on at grad student in transformative coaching and leadership here at Westwood. And he'll take up that role in the center of defense. Where Edwards will go off. And he'll spread those center backs wide, trying to get some width. Here's Duty. So he's blown past his mark. Nicely done. Past Alwador. Diaz arrives and a sublime first touch there. And Diaz, this is positive football. JC Cortez arrives, pulls it back, and perfectly positioned is Captavila. Silva keeps it alive. And Cortez once again. Best move of the match for UCLA. Well, that's more like it. Yeah, that's great, great buildup and possession from UCLA. They, they found Diaz. Diaz, a nice threaded ball through, looking for Cortez. Here's the ball in. And there's Diaz on the ball. He looks, his, picks his head up. Nice threaded pass. Finding Cortez. Cortez just unable to connect on the cross. But this is better from UCLA. And a chance of the counterattack for Oregon State. Williams trucks it down. 1v1 against Blasu, squares it out. Spikner gets it wrong on the first touch, allowing UCLA to clear their lines. And now things open up. The temperature starts to heat up, too. Here's Motiam, and Motiam calls his own number, but it's a pretty routine save. A goalkeeper of the caliber of Nate Crockford. Way back to Crockford. Black crowd a little subdued here, a little befuddled. Duty. And you see, like, guarding a little bit more of the share of possession in the last five or six minutes to step in the right direction. And still trying to claw one back after that opening strike 14 minutes in from Ellis Spikner, who was expertly set up by Motiam. Here's Grassi. Former Italy under 17 and Cortez trying to flick it through to no avail. And it will be Oregon State once again going to the substitutes bench. And Fabian Straudi, the Italian, will come in and take a role in the attack. So Tiam will take a spot on the bench. Now Stroudy will kind of acquit himself into this sophisticated Oregon State scheme. Here's Farnos, the substitute, and Grassi just gives it a ride forward, trying to find Rainbow, who really has been starved for service. He's saying with just the one shot. One of the best, really, offensive push have, has come when they went to the wide areas and then tried to cross it back in. Aside from set pieces, that has been the best looks for UCLA. That final piece, though, just missing in terms of runs and getting on the end of the crosses. Back the other way now with Spike New giving chase. That will bring out Crockford all the way to the edge of his box. Final five minutes of half number one. 
Chile chasing this one. Here's Achilla. Grassi. Cortez. Will close down. And Dante Williams' work rate to be applauded tonight. He's covered so much ground in the center of the park and coming out in that periphery. Here's Blasu. She started the first game with Pietro Grassi suspended and carry over in that tournament loss to Duke. J.C. Cortez, a freshman from New Jersey, near side for Silva, who's re-established his traditional role at left fullback. Smart ball that time from Sosa. Tracked down by Tomas Rainbow. Here is Sosa. Cortez, UCLA getting a foothold. Grassi for Andre Ochoa. This is better, made it difficult, and really put duty under pressure. And there's space on that right-hand side. Arnold and Oregon State looking to attack it behind Clarence Awador. Such a comfort, such a confidence about this Oregon State team. They don't seem at all perturbed. Even when they do lose possession, out of possession, you're right, Christian, and that confidence. They know they are going to ultimately get the ball back, and it's it's so interesting that they are so organized when they have so much freedom and ability to interchange and switch positions. So, again, that, that says a lot about these players, the sophistication of the players, and, and the understanding of spacing and the channels. Yeah, and as technical as it has been, and passing-oriented it has been, it has really been a high-tempo game. You're right, it hasn't. And really, Oregon State, not a lot, you know, they've had the majority of the possession, but but they're not coming chance after chance. Um, maybe that you would anticipate, given how much they have possessed in this first half. So I think for UCLA, they can take that and go into the locker room and try to fix some things and figure out how they can break this Oregon State defense down. They'd like to do it right about now. Final minute, Cortez squaring it out in front. Oh, and it's all gone awry for Oregon State, but it's a good cover up that time for Luis Castillo. 30 seconds left here in the first half. Can they sneak a late equalizer? What a boon that would be for their confidence. Duty showing it to Conte and nicely retrieved. Iron State, Jerron Gerbet. Ten second count, he's on it, pump forward, and down goes Tommy Silva, referee, not at all interested in the penalty kick, <laughs> waving it off. Ending a little controversy, a roar of disapproval from the crowd. But, you know, Oregon State and Ellis Spikner deservedly out in front here at halftime, Tracy. Yeah, that's right. And really the better of the chances for the game have come for Oregon State. They are definitely leading in the force things. I felt like they were doing things well in the wide areas. Uh, force Oregon State to do some de defending. UCLA has been chasing the ball uh, all game. And I think if you're Oregon State, you come out here, you do exactly what you did in the first half. But this time in the second half, you have to be a little bit more refined, a little sharper in the final, final third. Yeah, Oregon State coming out and making UCLA look flat out pedestrian at times. So perhaps a little bit of a rethink for the Bruins right now, who are usually so formidable here on their home ground. Good crowd tonight. UCLA, a team, of course, it's been very good on home soil throughout the years. Only one defeat and four victories this term. Wins over Cal State Fullerton now on Sunday, along with Liberty, Virginia Tech, and UCLA. Their only loss coming just after Labor Day. In a controversial match against Grand Canyon 3-2. It was a real interesting affair, but a match that lacked tempo, lacked intensity. We'll see if things pick up here. Thursday night under lights, and Oregon State will start us off in half number two. The visitors in the white strip going from right to left across your screen. Great to have you along once again. These two normally put together a thrilling barn burner more times than not, as we mentioned. 12 goals between these two in the last two meetings. Just the one here throughout 45 minutes, and it's UCLA on the back foot here. Awador carving open some space, and it's a real important header that time from Tommy Silva. We had to deal with Fabian Straudi 
just on his back shoulder, but what a delivery from this man, Awador. That was a great look from the wide area, trying to find the runner inside, and an excellent clearance out of danger. Oregon State looking comfortable, unbothered. Timely service, it'll be their fourth corner. And trotting over to take it will be Javier Armas coming off the brace, getting both goals for Oregon State's. Last time out, 2-1 away to Denver. Looking to drive in the supply line. It's a good-looking ball. It falls to Dante Williams. Lifts it back in, and it bounces safely into the hands of Crockford. Crockford making that great save on Perez. UCLA not offering up much of anything going forward. Didn't record a shot on target in the first 45 minutes. If we had time of possession, our be really a lion's share of it in favor of Oregon State as they commit the foul. Once again, Silva who spent a lot of time on the floor tonight. Just a bit of having able to find their game and click into gear. Yeah, and really uh, having trouble finding that rhythm. Uh, it's been a bit of a slower game than I anticipated we'd see here today. I thought it'd be a little bit more fast paced, uh, a little bit more wide open. So UCLA looking to find that rhythm, looking to get more stints of possession and force this Oregon State team to have to defend and have to chase. This cosmopolitan set up for Oregon State. And the tip of the hat to the Beavers who really embossed it. Is there a way back for Andrea Choa? Shows too much of it. And Almodor, what about that touch? That is sensational. It doesn't result in any longevity in terms of possession. Here's Sosa who lifts up his head, plays Diaz, has the option. Inside channel and called his own number, perhaps the wrong decision. First touch of the game for Luis Castillo. Here's that brilliant first touch, an even better second touch, trying to get around a pair of UCLA Bruin defenders. But again, we're seeing UCLA on this last play get wide, have some time and space to pick your head up and pick out a runner, but not connecting on that final ball in. Tommy Silva for Costa Mica Alides. And here's Rainbow, keeps his spot in that first 11 from the outset of half number two. It's worked its way to the right hand side for Conte, who cut a silent figure in the first half, facing up against Lund, who cuts off the channel, and an errant cross goes out and play, and it'll be a goal kick for Luis Castillo. Good, good 1v1 defending. Well, if you want to watch Pac-12 Now app or Pac-12 LA, it's USC women taking on the Oregon State women. Looks to be goalless early on there. Nicole Payne coming off a big brace last weekend and a victory for Jane Alaconis' women. Big things expected out of the Trojans. Remember, Pac-12 LA or Pac-12 Now, if you want to watch the Trojans and the Beavers women go at it. We're here live in Westwood, the Oregon State men Comfortably out in front in goal to nil, thanks to a 14th minute strike from Ellis Spikner. Just from the outset in the second half. And you know, this man really hasn't had much to do. Luis Castillo, relatively untested. The Bruins trying to change that. Three game unbeaten run. Back to back wins over Cal State Fullerton and away to Cal. In fact, took a point away to. Stanford as well in that goalless affair on the 15th and the first time they've come away unbeaten on trips to the Bay Area schools since 2013. What a huge opening weekend for Pac-12 play for the Bruins. Always a tough road trip to have to go up and face Cal and Stanford. Not an easy place to play. Jimmy Gunn always has his charges ready. Neil Griffin, former UCLA assistant, now in charge in Berkeley. They're trying to work the channel down the right hand side, but asking too much of Jose Conte. It will come out for the Beavers throwing. And let's take a look at the way it shapes up right now. UCLA on four points, having played a couple of games already. As I mentioned, this is the conference opener here for Oregon State, so the table a little unbalanced. Yeah, and certainly that will change the more matches that this Oregon State team gets to play for Pac-12 play, but. I mean, it's going to be a really interesting season for Pac-12. Breaks now for Kevin Diaz. 
On the edge, tries to play it forward for Rainbow, who couldn't sort out his feet. Tough luck there for the Kiwi. The State of Team that went all the way to the Elite Eight or quarterfinals last year for being upended by Clemson on penalty kicks. The Tigers going on to win it all in the NCAA in 2021 as Blasu commits this foul. UCLA made their way to the postseason as well, falling in the second round away to Duke. Here's Rainbow for Andrea Choa. Good switch now for duty. They need more of this. Positive football. Here's Jose Conte coming out of that Valencia youth system in his native Spain. Going against a lot of his countrymen tonight, wearing white. Rainbow has drifted to the periphery, supported well by Pietro Grassi. Duty. Nowhere to go. Closed down well by Arnau Farnos. Here's Conte off the throw in. Lund trying to play catch up. Twisting and turning is the lively Spaniard. Pokes it forward. Diaz, first touch gets away from him. Tries to chip it through. And that's where the Bruins haven't had it tonight. That final yes. ball, the extra bit of quality. And really what they are lacking, that final third. Because they are making some good positive runs. And especially in the second half, they've looked pretty bright in the width, the wide areas. It's just that final piece whether it's the run or, or the service in. You see they're doing a good job of getting back to their possession game and committing the foul, free kick for the Beavers. The 50th meeting between these two Pac-12 programs. UCLA have dominated it. Oregon State coming into their own as an emergent power under Terry Boss. Beavers have won five of the last seven. And referee. Eunice Maracay having some words with Oregon State's Javier Armas saying, let's get on with it. So throw in now for UCLA at the errant touch there from Castillo. All the way back for Blasu. This is Nate Crockford in goal. He's comfortable with the ball at his feet. Nicely done by Michael Ease to flex for Rainbow, trying to work his way around the likes of Armas to no avail and commits the foul. Bringing down Gibert. Talk about a thriller. Last year in Corvallis, it was a 4 3 shootout. UCLA was up three goals to one on the 65th minute, but then it would be Molina Diaz really getting into the mood. What a performance he put on. Two goals and an assist, and then. Late on, UCLA beaten by Sofian Jeffal, Oregon State taking it four goals to three. UCLA would get their revenge a couple of months later at a 3-2 win here at Wallace Annenberg. It's always been thrilling, but tonight you'd have to say kind of a far departure from yeah, those two games. Really, uh, definitely not typical of these two teams and the way that they play and the space that opens up because of the styles that they play. Oregon State team that's been beset by injuries a little bit. Lena Diaz hasn't featured too much. Trying to get him back to full fitness is certainly a priority. Here's Mikhailidis. Cross takes a deflection, and it will be a quarter kick now for the Bruins, who haven't had any of those tonight. So they're first in the evening. Let's see what they offer up here. They'll bring forward Grassi and Blasu. And how proficient they have been on dead balls, this could bode well. And really something for this Bruins team to, to get them back into this, this game offensively to get them going. Both of their goals against Cal coming off corner kick situation. Silva delivers, doesn't clear the first defender. Nicely handled by the Beavers. Here's Mikhailidis looking at wide for Jose Sosa. The redshirt senior from nearby Anaheim. And Silva wheeling his way around. Well done. For the kid from Tucson, Arizona, Rainbow flicks it on to his right. Lovely skill from the French-born UCLA striker. Doesn't amount to anything. And here come Oregon State. Good to see Adrian Molina-Diaz back in there wearing the number nine shirt. 
Man, you just saw the highlights. He scored twice in that 4-3 win for Oregon State last year. On that 4-3 win, Oregon State scored three goals in a matter, a span of three minutes. So uh, pretty incredible comeback. What a game that was. They put on some really re finally remembered encounters between these two. Points of the essence, and Oregon State would love nothing more to set themselves up with maximum points on their conference opener on the road. Here's the hard charging. Grayson Duty attacking the space. Here for the Bruins. D and Duty wheeling around. Tricky stuff from the UCLA right fullback. That's more like it. Puts it into the path of Colte and an excellent recovery from Clarence Olador. <laughs> Timely intervention to intercept in UCLA keep it. This is Blasu, the grad student, for Grassi, the sophomore. Silva. UCLA just needing an injection of quality in that final third. All 11 setting up camp in the Oregon State half, but Oregon State looking comfortable absorbing it. They've worked it wide. Conte has found some joy. Take a deflection out for a Bruin throw in. Well, it's definitely a different look than we saw for much of that first half. Uh, UCLA right now having some good positive spells of possession. And as you just mentioned, Christian, uh, all 11 or all 10 players for UCLA in their offensive half of the field. So I don't think we saw that much of that the whole first half. Here's Judy. A UCLA team that scored 12 times in eight games. Tied for third in conference play coming into tonight. Along with San Diego State. Whom the Beezer, Beavers will visit on Sunday. And here's Duty keeping it going on this right inside. The crowd's starting to get into it. Rainbow for Blasu. And if you're Oregon State, uh, you don't want to let the crowd start to get into it. You're on the road. You have the one goal lead. You really uh, dominated the first half. You want to continue that momentum into the second half. And right now, they're allowing UCLA to possess a lot more than they did to start that first half. So. For Oregon State, I think you want to go with the game plan you had in the first half, and that's keep the ball. And here's Alvador. He's got to be careful. Now this one's going to go against Lund, who came in and just chopped down Conte this time. And you see Ryan Jordan talking with referee Yunus Marakai. Perhaps desiring sterner disciplinary measures, but Lund becomes the first Beaver book tonight. Lund getting his second yellow card in the 2022 campaign. So free kick now for the Bruins. It's been better here, though, in the second half. Trying to mount the comeback. Silva. Ochoa. On the inside channel, a little too predictable. Dante Williams able to gather, interestingly enough, Motiab starting the second <laughs> half on the bench and clever stuff. They are really technical, aren't they? It's pretty stuff as they break that press. Gerbet in space. Here's Farnos. Does well to keep it in and come off of it. Jose Sosa, double substitution coming in up now for the Oregon State Beavers. They will go to their bench and bring Perez back on. They will go to the number two, Nacho Diaz. Another one of those players from the northern area of Spain in La Coruña. Also coming in number two, Nacho Diaz, number nine, Adrian Molina Diaz. Diaz will slot into a midfield role. Off comes Molina Diaz, who had a short shift. But Terry Boss telling us, you know, we want to bring him along slowly, play him back into full fitness. Such a big part of the setup last year. No doubt he has a role to play as Dante Williams also comes off. Here's the first touch of the second half for Perez. Conte playing it forward for Tomas Rimbaud. And you know, Diaz, certainly a big piece of the scoring for, for Oregon State, especially from last year. He, uh, he was second team all Pac-12 and tied the, the, the conference with four goals in the lead with, for the Beavers. Excuse me, he was tied for fourth 
in conference and goals for the Beavers. So uh, a player that came in and had went out with an injury, season-ending ending injury last season, starting to come back. It's always so tough as a player to try to work your way back in and, and maybe having high expectations and not, you know, amounting to those expectations. You get a little frustrated as a player. So this is a player for Oregon State that, that Coach uh, Terry Boss certainly has a lot of confidence in and wants to keep working him until he gets there and gets back. Yeah. Had that knee injury you mentioned last year in that match against UW. A little bit of a hiccup in his way back. He's missed the last three games after appearing all too briefly earlier on. Now it's his fourth appearance in 2022. But, you know, they lost seven starters last year and some big names. Uh, Mundy, of course, Jafal. It's amazing what they can produce as they continue to just kind of roll off the assembly line. But tip of the hat to the Oregon State Scouting Department. He's really done their job. All the way back to Crockford now. And really, again, a tip, a tip to the hat for Coach Terry Boss. Yeah. Because, I mean, you lose those those huge pieces, and then you bring in so many other pieces trying to, to weave them all together. Once again, final ball pretty routine for Castillo. We close it on the hour mark. Oregon State still out in front. In control. In the driver's seat. Looking for their sixth win in their last eight against UCLA. All the way back to Grassi. Duty. Some bright moments. Right inside, Conte dropping inside. Here's Diaz in that deeper role with Rainbow operating. Still as that center forward. Grassi now wide. This is Andre Ochoa for UCLA, the junior. Transfer from San Diego State. Slipping around. Good run from the former Aztec. Just behind the likes of Diaz. Sosa keeps possession and sustains it now for UCLA. They can use something positive here. Sosa. Someone into the area and too strong for Silva who couldn't latch onto it. And it was a great idea coming from Sosa. He saw a couple of blue jerseys and targets trying to go far post with it. Just a little too much on it in the end. And all kinds of opportunities. UCLA against Cal State Fullerton. Seven shots on target. Ryan Jordan telling us, you know, he made it work a little bit harder than we needed to. He had the chances, just couldn't take it. We'll see some changes now. Farnos off, the goal scorer spiking her back on. We'll see Riley Furch. And to take up his role once again in the center of the park as Diaz comes off. And I thought pushing Diaz back was a true bright spot for the Bruins. I thought it was way more impactful for the team to see him get some touches, dropping back a little bit. He was pushed up high to start the match and had very limited impact on the game and limited touches. And Skyler Gibert. Spiker with his first touch in the second half. Same thing with Furch. Trying to knit it together with Conte. Alwador is chopped by duty. Free kick for Oregon State. Here is aiming for their third consecutive win. A kick into gear. For a little bit of a lull in the schedule. Nine days rest since that win over Denver on the road. Take a rest when you can get it as those games start to come fast and furious at oh, absolutely. this time of the year. You, you know it all too well. <laughs> yep, and then I don't think Coach Terry Boss is complaining. <laughs> Here's Perez, who had that header saved in the first half by Crockford. Easily could have been 2 0. Sam Blasu. still looking for their first shot on target. Blasu loses out. Here's Andrea Gaptevila. Clarence Alador. Good support this time from Gerbe, who works it around. They're so technical, assured. Head up. About 20 foreign born players on this Oregon State team. As you mentioned, about nine or ten different countries represented, including the United States. 
Here's Rain Ball, an international player, but has his pocket pick. And Tabila able to get it back. Perez restores it. Here's the number 29, the substitute Italian. Fabian Straudi, the sophomore, links up with Spikner. Grassi did really well to win it. Hard to think when Grassi puts a foot wrong back there for UCLA. And then you look at it, eight Spaniards, four Frenchmen, a couple of Argentines, a Chilean and Ethiopian, throwing a German and Italian and a Senegalese, a sensational Senegalese in Motiam. What a team. It's a modern day game, isn't it? It sure is. Well, good link up play between Ochoa. This is Furch trying to slide it through. Quite come off. United State in no hurry to ignite this counter attack. That's not their game. They want to pass you off the park. All the way back to Castillo. Higher pressure down from the Bruins, trying to pick up the intensity. Comfortably dealt with. Here's Hale. Schiber on that right hand side. Castillo looking real smart with his feet. All the way to Straudi. Lund. This is where Oregon State are at their most comfortable. Yep. They want to almost lull UCLA to sleep a bit. And then dropping in there. Not quite what Nacho Diaz had envisioned. Substitute double switch now for the Bruins. JC Cortez and Aaron Edwards getting set to check in. He's he trying to find that spark. Had some positive moments of endeavor, some effort, but still unable to carve open the Bruins. Ring ball will come off, and here comes Aaron Edwards. And this is an interesting tweak. You and I were talking off air about Aaron Edwards, Aaron Edwards, a player that's been converted from his natural forward role. In fact, was one of the highly touted forwards coming out of Wilcox High School in that San Jose Earthquakes Academy. Now he's been converted to be a right back or even center back. Mikalidis off and Cortez back on. He'll take up a roll on that left hand side of the attack. Silva, a little higher. Here's Cortez, who was just reintroduced. Nicholas Blasu. Between the two subs that just it got inserted into the game in Edwards and Cortez, I almost wonder uh, that if UCLA is trying to use those uh, fresh legs to exploit this, this Beavers team in those wide areas. And we talked about in the first half and uh, starting the second half, those are the areas that UCLA has found the most success, getting wide, uh, getting those crosses in. That's the advantage of playing with a three-back system, and you take that early lead. You can drop that three into a five. And now the foul is Capdevila is brought to the floor. They pack that box, space a rare commodity. Let's look at this one here. You can see uh, just a clip after the fact on Capdevila. He's looked apart tonight, hasn't he? He has. Adrian Capdevila, part of the Barcelona youth setup. Did Actually partake in La Masia in Catalonia, but you can see that element of his game, that style that's kind of imprinted in the way he approaches it. Very technical, tidy on the ball. So free kick here, as most of this second half has been played inside the Oregon State half. Oregon State coming forward now. And standing over it will be Javier Armas. Drive one in. Best to deliver. He's called Tatis. Gets a foot in. Sits over. Perez drives it. And Gibert and his super save from Crockford. It was Johnny on the spot. And Crockford coming up with a massive save for UCLA. As Gibert had a golden opportunity. 
as this ball gets deflected right to him, right near the penalty Peter's spot. The nation, and he hits this one time. Williams. Not a lot Number of pace on the ball, so really a sitter in front of net. Nate Crawf Crockford sees this all the way in, goes to ground and makes a huge save for the Bruins. Williams back on, Stroudy off. Best chance since the goal for Oregon State. New side, corner number five. Once again, it'll be Armas to take it. Whoa! On the in swinger, Riley oh, Furch first to it and steered to safety by Jose Sosa. The way things have gone tonight, you think a second goal would just about be the decider between these two. And Oregon State is certainly not going to take their foot off the gas pedal. They're going to keep pressing forward when the opportunity presents itself. Here's Awador. Ran around his way past Salsa, turns on the pace. Great acceleration from the Oregon State winger. Well defended and brought, bringing down Grace and Duty. A bright spot, the sophomore. You can see there a nice little rollover from Awador and then <laughs> just a battle trying to a little drunken square dancing. Yeah. <laughs> See who can get called for a foul, and there was nothing in the end. Jubek. Perez for Dante Williams. Midfield utility man facing up. Slithering past duty. Amador crosses. Once again, an enterprising buildup in Oregon State kind of clicking into gear now. They are, and really, uh, Dante Williams has been a great distributor inside in the midfield for Oregon State as he finds the runner there in a nice cross in, just a touch ahead. It may break once again. Grassi deals with it expertly. Crockford put under pressure there. A little slight mistake. 20 minutes left. It's been good tonight, Crockford. Six foot four keeper. In that Chicago area, actually part of the Chicago Fire Academy as a youth. Certainly has the physique. Quick off the line. Good feet. Can distribute, play out. And as we've seen tonight, more than able shot stopper. Spikner with the flick and Grassi dispatches. As far as Oregon State's Javier Armas. Gerbet loses out, but he is able to claim Gibert. Part of that French contingent. David Perez. One wonders when we'll see an out and out full press from this Oregon, or this UCLA team trailing a goal to nil. Dante Williams for the Oregon State Beavers. And his first touch expertly dealt with. Gets himself out of a tight situation. And Gerbet will set it up for his countryman, Gibert. Down this right hand side for Nacho Diaz, who's come onto the scene as a substitute for OSU. Here's Awador. There's the overlap from Lund. Awador gliding along the edge of the penalty area. Gibert will pump one in. Grassi a little bit wrong, but no harm done. And Edwards asserts himself on the header and a chance for Conte to break. He's brought to the floor by Armas. The referee waves play on and Armas wins his run v1, but gives it away. It'll be a free kick for UCLA. And you know, Tracy, we're talking about Oregon State and how they've been dominant in possession, but in 1v1s, they really looked impressive tonight. They have been, and it's clear to me that that's what they want to do. They want to let these players shine in their 1v1 matchups and situations because they clearly can be, have the ability to be defenders. But that was an excellent, excellent show of some energy for UCLA from Conte as he was able to win the ball back and try to spring free. Here's Silva. You get goal side of Nacho Diaz, and he has early delivery, and Jabe is there. Cleared away by Nacho Diaz, only as far as UCLA's Andrea Choa, however. UCLA trying to pick up the tempo here behind Grayson Duty. Junior fullback for Aaron Edwards, who's drifted out to this right-hand side, and 
shown too much of it to Nicholas Lund. Lund getting it, mixing it up with Aaron Edwards. So this is this is a bright spot here. Aaron Edwards has quite a throw in on him. And he's went all the way inside the six. Grassi has it for JC Cortez, who couldn't sort out his feet quick enough. Nevertheless, though, he's still at positive soccer. He will have the corner kick, and they will also make a substitute here. Well, and again, another huge opportunity. It's almost like a corner kick from that long throw from Aaron Edwards for UCLA. And ends up being another opportunity, another corner opportunity off of the deflection. Well, it's going to be some mix-up on the substitution. Conte thought he was coming off, and it's going to be Diaz on. Ochoa off. Corner kick taken short. Pumped in by Salsa. Oregon State can't clear. Conte swarms around it. What a move. It's Jose Conte, and it's there for Diaz. And it was Gibert who got there first. Well, a little nervous back there for Oregon State. UCLA trying to work their way back into this game by sheer grit and desire, but they left themselves open on the counterattack. Here comes Ellis Spikner, leads it out in front. It's Dante Williams for Oregon State, who's muscled off of it. They appeal for the penalty, but none given. That would have been harsh against the Bruins. A lot of hands in the air coming from both jerseys right now. It did look like a good shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder battle as this ball gets played in between Williams. And I believe it was Cortez coming back for the Bruins. And not much in that challenge. And you see it. Not for eight, Yunus Marakai having some words with Adrian Capdevila and Aaron Edwards, who doesn't shy away from the physical element of the game. Edwards likes to mix it up, relishes that contact. Throw in now for OSU. Final quarter of an hour here on Thursday night. Here is Aaron Edwards. Once again, showing too much of a just bungles in. And that was full contact. And this is going to be a book against Aaron Edwards. Referee Yunus Marakai. And a quick no protest from the UCLA defender who came in. This was reckless. Yeah. Let's see how the referee decides to sort the situation out. Just trying to take the sting out of it. In the end, it's going to be a fourth yellow of the season for Aaron Edwards. He becomes the third man caution tonight for the UCLA Bruins, along with Andrea Choa. And I like this from the referee. He saw that. Both of these players' emotions were running really high between the two, and, and he knows that he's going to give Edwards a yellow off of that tackle right there. Just so late coming in with the cleats up and the leg. But he takes the time to talk to Edwards to calm the situation down, and now he's having some words with the Oregon State Jaber as well. Yeah, it was, in the end, unsporting behavior. Reckless, really. Probably lucky not to get a red, in my opinion. Absolutely. And Aaron Edwards, a lucky man to be on the pitch. So a show a book, along with Edwards. Clock stop. 75-29 mark. To look at it here and Edwards just came in full blood and didn't pull out and he just lunges out and that's where it's reckless yep. and that could really do someone some serious harm he knows it didn't even put up a protest whatsoever so we play on now Oregon State back in possession and in the driver's seat Joubert for Nacho Diaz twisting and turning his way down that right hand side Here's Lund. Awadon. 
Working on grace and duty here. We'll head to the byline. Good play. Wonderful buildup and a delivery from Awador. Putting UCLA on the back foot and is scurrying Crawford trying to keep it in. He did well. Once again, the play of Awador to be applauded down his left hand Absolutely. side. Absolutely. And what a take. Uh, he had one defender in front of him to beat. And we talked about the ability of these Oregon State players to take players on 1v1. And he did just that. Time is becoming a little bit of a factor in the back of the UCLA collective mind. Silva gives it a ride. Needs some inspiration. And look, Edwards to supply, supply that physical presence up top. Not to tread lightly on that booking here. And Conte thought he was victimized, but it will be a free kick going the other way. And I think they are looking to Edwards to, to provide that energy, that spark up top. And perhaps uh, the, the piece that has been missing, we, we saw them high pressure for a few minutes in the second half, the Bruins, and haven't seen it much since, but I thought that it was pretty effective. That's Bazin moments. Perez claimed by Sosa. Can the Bruins orchestrate something on the counter? No. Furch is caught in possession. Smooth operating here by Javier Amars. My goodness, what a <laughs> run here. This is a central defender. Gives it away, though, and got a little too cute. Furch now, going to be more direct, has his pocket pick once again. Gerbe's done well, and here's that man again, Awadar, bearing down, entering the penalty area, shows it to his left, rips down Solsa. It'll be a free kick for the Bruins. Yeah, just a little too handsy coming from Avador as his touch gets away from him, but beautiful setup coming from Gervais. Finding Avador in the wide area, comes back inside, and you can see there just pulls down Sosa. Good performance tonight from Clarence Avador now in his third consecutive start. Sophomore from France. Interestingly, as enough, hasn't been involved in any of the goals so far this season for Oregon State. But he's making his fourth appearance, I'm sure he'll have something to say. And look back on the only goal of the game. It came on the 14th minute from Ellis Spikner, Tracy Bailey. And, and it was Mo Tiam getting things going for Oregon State with that beautiful cross. And what a run from Spikner as he just times this perfectly. A little redirection into the back of the net. And that's where we stand. Good run from Spikner. And some kind of casual defending from the Bruins. No chance there for Crockford. And there's that run right between the central yep. defenders. Silly not dealing with it. That's why you continue your run. And boy, it made an easy tap in for Spikner. Goal number two, Oregon State. One's enough so far. 10 minutes and some change left in this one. Perez wheels around, supported by Armas. This is Nicholas Lund, a sophomore from Germany. And reliable on that left-hand side. So too is this man, Dante Williams. Hard to single out one individual for praise over another. It's a comprehensive, impressive team performance so far from Oregon State. Here's Capdevila. Nacho Diaz. Oregon State trying to see it out. Put their foot on the jugular. Here's Lund. Higher pressure now. And Awador turning excellently and getting goal side of duty. He's been brilliant. Irrepressible. Sets the table. Spikner denied by Crockford and cleared away by Tommy Silva. But once again, it all starts down this left-hand side from Clarence Awador. Who put it on a platter for Spikner. He has been brilliant all night and a beautiful turn here. You see that touch right there that cuts the defender out of the play. And he has eyes up, head up, looking for Spikner on that little low post run in behind the back line. And in the end, gets cleared off the line by the UCLA defender, Tommy Silva. Spikner with a chance for the brace, and you can see it. He wanted it back. And he knows. It was just one touch away. Credit Crockford, though. He's had some big-time saves. Yep. Like he had on Sunday in that one new win over the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. And the referee saying, if you go to the floor, Nicholas Lund, you've got to go off. 
So they'll go down to 10 men temporarily. Referee waiting for the medical staff to come off the pitch before we resume on the 81st minute. Extra contentious <laughs> moments here. And some confusion as Lund is back on the pitch. Don't, don't forget the water bottle. <laughs> right as UCLA throws another water bottle out onto the field. So. Yes. They'll bring on the number 15 too, Nico Lopez. The, the clock is stopped though right now for, for the Bruins trying to claw their way back into this one. Cop de Vila off. Here comes Nico Lopez. One of the local kids from Oregon City up inside, outside the Portland area. Talos Rainbow UCLA coming back on. Jordan very high on him. Rainbow playing the most minutes he's played this season against Cal State Fullerton appearing for over an hour as a substitute. There's Lund who wins it back for Oregon State now. Pere is in a wide roll on this left-hand side. Has space to attack. Diaz back into the mix as well for UCLA, and he's done expertly. <laughs> well done from Diaz now, and this is positive football from the UCLA Bruins. Looking for the equalizer and the hard charging. Tommy Silva has one available on this left-hand side. Cortez gets his first touch wrong. Allows Oregon State to recover. <laughs> Silva squeezes off the cross, but easily met by Joran Gerbet. Perez, beautifully weighted now in Williams. Good recovery from Grassi, but it's a 1v3 for Dante Williams, who waits for the cavalry to arrive. Good hold-up play from Dante Williams. They keep possession. They are managing this match to perfection, Oregon State. They are, and we talked about their patience in the first half uh, in terms of possessing and when to go forward, and they're doing a great job here as we get deep into the second. Awador. He's shown his heels to a few UCLA defenders today. Which brings down duty. Avador working down this line, but Duty says, nah, -uh, not this time. <laughs> You're not gonna beat me this time. Yeah, no nonsense defending. Well, good positioning. Took the good angle, didn't he? So Pietro Grassi down from UCLA. As they opt for the expansive approach. Oregon State playing a real high line. That three has turned into a five back there. Duty trying to break the lines. Conte down this right hand side. Slithers past Dante Williams. And Rainbow will drop into a deeper roll. And a big strong switch for JC Cortez. Can okay, they conjure up this time as Silva arrives down the left, providing the wit. Here's Edwards. He'll pump in the cross. And pretty easy for Gael Gibert. There's Nicholas Blasu. Rainbow. Their spot can they find the combination to this Oregon State safe much easier said than done it's only allowed six goals in six games rainbow that was weighted well by Riley Furch but Oregon State able to converge and win it and it spike near the goal scorer wrestled the ground by Nick Blasu free kick for Oregon State that will suit them just fine as does Precious seconds tick away. You're right, they'll take their time to set up for this opportunity. But on that last chance for UCLA, it was Riley Furge getting some good touches on the ball. I think that Oregon State so far this match has done a great job in dealing with Furge and really making sure he's not dangerous. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Tracy. He hasn't find, found the game. A lot of these you see, players haven't, but Perch is such a conduit. He is, and he's really been that playmaker for UCLA. And again, Oregon State doing an excellent job of understanding where he's making his runs and trying to really close down those passing lanes when he does get the ball. They're jumping in, intercepting it, and making sure that it's hard for Perch to, to playmake. He's had to drop really deep. 
Carry the ball up. Come out, it'll be a UCLA throw in. We're gonna make a triple switch and Cho is gonna come back on and we're gonna see the first appearance of the game for Charlie Crockford. We're in the number 17, Mikhailidis also coming back in. Crockford, brother of Nate, the goalkeeper. Lasso will come off along with Edwards. So, I get to the tinker at the back. That means Cortez will drop into a defensive role with Mikhailidis wide. The Bruin attack. Trying to find the right formula. Gibert, just over the head of Diaz. So you say they're looking to build once again. Less than five minutes left in this one. Here's Grace and Duty now for the Bruins and telegraphed it for Awador, who's onto it in a flash. And look at Awador go. 86th minute. Continue to blow by defenders. Duty. A bad run in his own right. And a shove in the back there from Jabay. And that one born out of frustration more than anything. And he is very lucky. Two hands on the back. Seen him sent off against Grant Canyon earlier this year. Grayson Duty. In my estimation, a little bit harsh against him. You see, they need to keep a cool head. They're still in this one. Yeah, they do. And there is still time, as you mentioned, Christian. But they have to now turn up the energy. As this clock winds down, they want to push forward, get the ball forward in a quicker fashion. Now time of the essence. It's almost hitting hope time. JC Cortez dropping into a central role. In support of Silva, though, a little long, and that one a little aimless. And at this stage of the game, con conceding possession like that can prove to be very costly. And they're lucky to get that ball back, right back. But you're right, uh, UCLA definitely has to have that urgency, but they also have to have the patience. So a little tough to, to say, but if it's not on, they cannot force it because, again, they need the ball, they need the possession of the ball because once Oregon State gets it back, they're so tough to win it back from. It's been a great game of chess. In these two. Lovely touch from Duty. Slips around Williams. And J.C. Cortez for the UCLA Bruins. Tommy Silva has ignited so many attacks for UCLA throughout the years. They could use him right now, but Lopez who gets it back for Oregon State. This is Dante Williams restoring possession. Smart ball for this man. Alwador is putting together a man of the match performance down this left hand side. And it's Alwador. So many international players coming through this Oregon State setup, and it's the latest. Come off the conveyor belt. Yep. Foul <laughs> throw. <laughs> I'm not sure I've seen that in we some had, time. We had two the other day, I believe. Characteristic, here's Conte trying to find this game. Supply the equalizer. Crowd gets off their feet and out their seat. Here's Rainbow, positive space for him. Rainbow, courageous block, and more times than not, Armas is marked, mopped up really well in the back. Here's Andre Achoa. Pumps in the cross, and once again, it's Gibert perfectly positioned. Edwards fires it wide as it's given away, and that would might have been the best chance of the night for UCLA. <laughs> and what a huge opportunity for that player right there, Aaron Edwards, as 
UCLA gives the ball up here. A poor clearance, a low clearance to Gervais, and Gervais is trying to drop that back to clear it out from a teammate, but Aaron Edwards reads it well, steps in front, hits it one time, and really does not miss that far post by much. And you see a little touch of the cramp, perhaps, from Gibert. Oregon State trying to play out of the back and caught a little bit unawares, and Edwards really wants to have that one back. Could have been the all-important equalizer. Play stopped at the 89.04 mark in the final minute, just seconds left. Let's take a look at it here. It's casual from Gervais, isn't it's it? It's very casual from Gervais, and great anticipation for Edwards to hop on it. And you can see where he's trying to go there. And obviously, Luis Castillo for Oregon State, not exactly in the great position to be ready to, to save that one, but Aaron Edwards hits it really well with a lot of power, just the accuracy off as he's looking to go far post. Read the body language. He's disappointed. And I've been reading it a, a few minutes ago, too. He's kind of had that same demeanor. But I think, uh, you know, minutes, you know, a few minutes back, 10, 15 minutes ago, UCLA, I mean, they still had plenty of time, and there still is time in this match. They believe, and there's no shortage of work ethic and commitment to the cause. They need it now with 40 seconds left. Last chance saloon, Edwards continues his run. And it's coughed up, and once again, it's Awador who's away in full flight now. And Clarence Awador trying to put this one on ice. We'll head to the corner flag. Just a smart play by Awador, as he did have the ability to attack and continue forward with another player. Takes this to the corner, tries to eat up some clock. And the 10 second count is on. And it may be too little, too late. And the Oregon State Beavers have won their third in succession with a clean sheet tonight. An impressive display. Ellis Spikner with the only goal as the Beavers take the 1 0 win. Tracy Bailey. And a beautiful finish, and maybe a little bit unexpected in terms of the scoreline here from both of these teams. But in the end, it was Oregon State's possession, uh, the score in the first half, and then it was some stints from.